Imagine you're gay and your father is one of the founders of gay conversion therapy. That is something that uh, Richard Socarides had to go through. And if you are familiar with Richard Socarides at all, you'll know that he was actually President Clinton's senior advisor on gay rights. Uh, but at some point in his life, he had to come out to his father and he had to be honest about his sexuality. And ori originally, his father had a very negative reaction to it. Neither one of them were surprised at you know how the entire conversation went. His father had already assumed that his son was gay, um, but after a little while things started to change and here's what happened. Let's take a look. A relatively short interval of a couple of months in which we didn't speak to each other passed and then he sent me a letter and he sent me a beautiful letter, uh, handwritten, four pages, in which he basically said, uh, I'm sorry I behaved so badly. Uh, I'm sorry I got angry. You're the most important person to me in my life, and uh, uh, I love you, and the only thing that's important to me is your happiness. And if this is what makes you happy, I want to support you, and we'll just figure out a way to manage it. Now, that was a great moment, you know, the letter was a great moment. Um, you know, it was not always that easy going forward because he did not, you know, he did not change what he was saying publicly about the treatment and cure of homosexuality. Now, if you're the father of gay conversion therapy, and you're also the father of a gay son, and you can't convert him, don't you have to fold up shop and say, okay, yeah, my bad, my mistake, turns out it doesn't work. I think that at a point you realize that this is your bread and butter, butter, you're making money off of this, and it's something that you've stood by so publicly, so it's kind of hard to step back from it, especially if you are credited with being one of the founders of that. You know, that's kind of your claim to fame. Yeah, I mean, you can't just say all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, I never should have done that. It would be so, like you. You would lose your living, too. That's a, probably another thing. And, yeah. and he probably is so invested in it, you know, psychologically, it's sad that he couldn't let it go. But I, I don't think I didn't notice your slight Freudian slip of bread and bunner. <laughs> okay. No, that wasn't a Freudian slip. And I don't bun, even... you know, something. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't even know what that and means. And by the way, if his dad was doing gay conversion therapy, that means that his dad was probably gay, too. Uh, that, that's a fair point. Now, the reason why Jenk says that is because oftentimes when we do coverage of gay conversion therapy, there are some cases where some of these so-called clinics will uh, sexually abuse or molest some of their patients, right? Um, and, and so that's, that's a big issue. And of course, we have this infamous video that we've showed you before. Uh, it kind of gives you insight into what happens during gay conversion therapy. Let's take a look at that. Mom! 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 Mom, why did you do that to me? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> okay, no, no, but that's real gay conversion. It's not the Socrates, whatever. It's another guy, right? And is everybody doing gay conversion therapy like really super repressed homosexuals? Maybe not. <laughs> okay, but this dude is like, as you saw from the rest of the interview on CNN, clearly gay. Okay, and as you just saw from that tape clearly repressed. Right. And I mean, that's his therapy to pound away at a pillow with a tennis racket, pretending it's his mom's head? <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> and, you know, there, there were um, some cases where, you know, electroshock therapy was used, which is hideous, but also uh, cases where the so-called doctor, they're not really doctors or medical professionals in any way, shape, or form, they would have the patients sit on their lap as they, like, held them and, like, kind of bounced up and down. I mean, how, <laughs> how is that gay, like, how is that going to convert someone? Because after they're done, then those, you know, then they're, then they feel like, okay, well, I don't want it anymore. You just bounce the gay away. Is <laughs> yeah, that no, how it works? No, it's basically a lap dance. And after you've concluded your affairs, then you're not as interested in gay sex anymore because you've already finished. 